does having an autoimmune disease mean you have a histamine issue? Uh, you know, does autoimmunity equal histamine issue? No. So you can have an autoimmune disease and not have a histamine issue. You can have a histamine issue and not have autoimmune disease. And you can have an autoimmune disease and a histamine issue together. Um, you know, so the, 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 how do you know, um, goes back to a drawing that's in my book. And we've all seen before, if you've frequented these calls where we look at that naive T cell or that baby T cell, and we've got that innate immune system dendritic cell, and it's handing off a piece of antigen from the innate immune system to the naive T cell, which is the adaptive immune system. And remember the naive T cell is the immature chubby little baby T cell. And what it matures into depends on what this foreign antigen is and what signals the dendritic cell is sending over at the same time. It's called co-activation. So this little handoff determines um, what this baby matures into. And that baby could mature up into a Th1 cell or a Th2 cell or a Th9 TH17, TH22, T regulatory cell, or it's called a T follicular help, helper cell. So there's, that should be seven. Yep, seven different T cell subsets that we know about scientifically right now, in 2024. And so, um, th these, these signals that are released and the, the signals that are available in the environment when this handoff is happening, uh, helps tell the baby what to mature into. So you could look at these TH, these TH numbers probably don't mean anything to you, but if we looked at it as a career, you could say, you know, carpenter, doctor, lawyer, teacher, um, what else? Uh, surfer, uh, engineer, and uh, garbage man. I don't know. So seven different careers, and and the difference in what guides them on the career again is the is the site or the cytokines or the communicating messages in the environment. So if we have a lot of what's called. Um, uh, interleukin 12 and interferon mm -hmm. gamma, then we're going to go TH1. If you have um, interleukin 4, you're going to go TH2. If you have interleukin 4 plus TGF beta, you're going to go TH9. And here's the different things that you need to go with these different directions. And I know it's a lot of uh, minutia, but um, uh, T follicular helper cells. Oh, I'm blanking on the last one. Um, I know it's a lot of minutia, and you might say, why do I need to know that? But you need to know it because Lyndall asked the question. And the question, it's IL-21 is what we want there. There it is. She said, how do we know which one I have? And so again, does all autoimmune disease, uh, is all, all autoimmune disease a histamine issue? No, the histamine, the histamine issues are gonna be here and here, Oops. here and there. So histamine's involved in Th2 and Th9. Um, whereas you could have autoimmunity because of a TH1 imbalance, and that's not histamine driven. Uh, histamine may be involved in a TH17 type response. You know, so it, it depends on what's going on. Um, does that help? Linda? Yeah, it does. And then if you do have a histamine problem, should you stay away for, from fermented foods or? Are fermented foods okay? Um, so in general, you know, you'll you'll see stay away from histamine. Um, I think it 
it's more nuanced that it's if you look at foods that either contain histamine or promote release of histamine, it's a very long list. And it's a list that includes a lot of things that, you know, you eat normally. So you might get depressed and be like, I can't eat anything. Um, so it's not necessarily about avoiding all histamine foods. Um, if you, if we look at an individual and say, what is this person's histamine load? Then we can say, okay, we need to reduce histamine intake a certain percentage versus a hundred percent. Maybe if, a, if someone's load is, more or less than the next person's. Does that make sense? So it might be more about managing intake than it is completely avoiding every single, you know, molecule of histamine containing food out there. And then, and then understanding what the histamine, uh, why the histamine issue is there matters too. So if, if say we're talking, we have a patient that has a histamine issue, is it because of they're eating tons of histamine food and, or is it because their biology and their ability to break it down is poor? Okay. So that would be enzymes like diamine oxidase and H uh, and methyltransferase. So those are enzymes that help break down histamine in our body. Um, So like you could have too much histamine because you're just eating a ton of prohistamine food all the time or you might not be eating a lot of histamine food, but your enzymes are inefficient. And so, you know, one avocado, which shouldn't bother somebody and someone who's got really inefficient histamine degradation enzymes might cause histamine symptoms, you know, theoretically, right? So if some people are cutting out foods and it's like, that's not doing it. If they have inefficient enzymes, that's not helping their enzyme system other than to not put a load on them. But if they try reintroducing the food down the road, they're going to have the same symptoms because they never discovered and addressed the enzyme issue. Okay. Makes sense. Yep. Somewhat. Yep. Thank you. Uh huh. So no autoimmune disease does not equal automatic histamine issue and histamine issue does not automatically mean you're going to have an autoimmune disease. You have to look at the case and figure out with each individual what's going on.